The first thing you want to do is make sure your Galaxy S23 is charged. Right now you can see that I'm only at 41%, but you're going to want at least 60%, especially if you have a lot of data to transfer. So if you see that it's less than 60%, go ahead and plug it in to charge it while you go through the setup process. The next thing you want to do is put the SIM card in your Galaxy S23. This could be a SIM card that you're transferring from an old device or a brand new SIM card that was provided to you by your carrier. Since I don't have a new SIM from my carrier, I'm just going to transfer it from my Fold 4 to the S23 Ultra. To do this, you'll need the SIM ejector tool that came in the box with your Galaxy S23. But first, we need to turn off both devices. For a Samsung device, all you have to do is hold the power and volume down buttons together for a couple seconds, then tap power off, then tap it again. Find the SIM ejector port on your old device and push the SIM ejection tool into that port. And that'll eject your tray and pull that out and you can take your SIM card out. If your old device has a micro SD card, leave it in the old device. On the S23 Ultra, the SIM tray is on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and eject that. And unfortunately, there's still no micro SD card slot on the S23 series. There's a little notch on the tray that helps you line up your SIM card and it should snap right into place with the contacts facing up. Now put the SIM tray back into your Galaxy S23 Ultra with the contacts facing the screen. Once you turn your S23 back on, you'll get this message here that says you need a service provider update, and this just needs to configure your S23 to work with your carrier. So go ahead and tap restart and switch. Once your phone restarts, you'll be able to start the setup process. So go ahead and tap start. Then you'll have to agree to Samsung's terms of service as well as their privacy policy. And the third option is asking if you want to send diagnostic data to Samsung, which includes information like how you use your device so Samsung can improve their products. I personally don't provide any manufacturer diagnostic data, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that one, then tap agree. After that, you'll be met with a new transfer option that Samsung hasn't had before, and this is using a QR code to transfer some data from your old device to your new device. If you choose to transfer from a Samsung device or other Android device, you'll be able to jump straight to the QR code. But if you're transferring from an iPhone or iPad, you'll first have to sign on to a Wi-Fi network. Since I'm transferring from a Fold 4, I'm going to go ahead and tap Galaxy. And since my Fold 4 is a Samsung device, as soon as I brought it close to my S23 Ultra, I got this pop-up asking me if I want to set up my S23 Ultra using this phone. If you didn't get a pop-up, you would just open up your camera app, aim the camera at the QR code, and tap the web address. Now I need to verify that it's me on the old device, and that's going to transfer over all of my accounts and Wi-Fi passwords. Once it's done with that, I get the option to transfer all of my apps and data. So I'm going to go ahead and tap Next. And it'll ask you to transfer the data with Samsung's Smart Switch application, which is the best method, so go ahead and tap Allow. On your old device, you'll get a notification asking you if you want to allow the transfer. Tap Allow. Then you'll have to give Smart Switch permission to access all of the information on your phone so it can transfer the data, so tap Allow again. And on the new device, you have two options. You can transfer wirelessly or use a cable instead. I recommend using a cable if you want the fastest transfer, but if you have a ton of data to transfer, like let's say you have over 100 gigs worth of photos and videos you want to transfer from the old device to the new device, then I recommend transferring wirelessly and plugging both devices in so they don't run out of battery while the transfer is happening. Since I'm still charging my S23 Ultra, I'm going to choose the wireless option. Now my S23 Ultra is going to search through the old phone to find out what it can transfer. And in case you're wondering why the screen brightness is different between these two, anytime you get a new Samsung phone, it limits the screen brightness to a little bit less than 50%, and that's just to save battery life while you're setting it up. Once the device is set up, I'll be able to get the same brightness on both devices. Once it's done scanning through the phone, you get a few options. You can transfer everything, and it says it'll take about an hour and 19 minutes. You can transfer just your calls, contacts, and messages. It says that'll take about nine minutes, or you can choose exactly what you want to transfer. I'm going to go ahead and use the custom method to show you guys everything you can and can't transfer. I'm going to go ahead and tap next now. Now here's a list of everything that can transfer from the old device to the new device. You can transfer all your calls and contacts. You can transfer your messages and you can select to transfer all of your messages or just a specific time frame of messages. You can transfer all of your apps or if you tap this arrow, you can choose specific apps that you want to transfer. And if there's an application here that you don't use often and you don't want to transfer, you can just deselect it here. Or if you only want to select a few applications to transfer, you can tap all at the top, then tap it again to deselect everything, then just go through and select the apps that you do want to transfer. If you have a Samsung Galaxy smartwatch, you can see that smart switch starts automatically on it. And if you tap this Galaxy wearable option, you can see that I have my Galaxy Watch 5 Pro here, as well as all the things that will automatically transfer from the Watch 5 Pro to the new device. But if there were specific things that I didn't want to transfer over, I could deselect them here. And further down, you can also transfer your generic Galaxy wearable app settings and plugins.
Settings is a really important one because it has your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. So this just makes sure that all of your Wi-Fi networks transfer over to the new device. So you don't have to ask their friends for their Wi-Fi passwords again. And since it also transfers all of the Bluetooth connections, it'll make it faster to reconnect to all your Bluetooth devices as well. The home screen option lets you transfer your home screen layout. This includes the placement of your widgets as well as the placement of your applications on your home screens. And this will even transfer your Samsung deck settings. Since I'm transferring from a Galaxy Fold 4, I have the option to transfer the cover screens home screens, or if I tap this, I could switch to the main screens home screens. If you're not transferring from a Samsung Fold device, you won't see these two options. At the bottom, you get your images, videos, audio, and document files. And if you tap the arrow on one of these, you can select specific albums to transfer, as well as specific photos within those albums. And the same is true for all four of these options. You can select specific folders and files. If you're transferring data from a device that has a micro SD card installed in it, you get this SD card section at the bottom, and from here you can select which specific files you want to transfer from the SD card as well. And if you tap the arrow here, you can still select which specific folders and files you want to transfer. At the bottom, you can tap to find out what data can't be transferred. So that includes read-only contacts, calendar events from synced accounts because those transfer automatically, WhatsApp chat history, but there's a separate way to do that right from within the WhatsApp application, and any data that can't be transferred either because of an application's policies or for security and compatibility issues like Samsung wallet, tips, and calculator. And you also can't transfer the default home screen wallpaper and lock screen wallpaper, and that's primarily for copyright reasons if you're transferring from something like an iPhone. Once you've selected everything you want to transfer, at the top, it'll show you how much data you're going to be transferring and about how long it's going to take to transfer that data. If I deselect some of these larger files, you'll see that the amount of time is reduced significantly. But before we transfer this, let's see what limitations there are when transferring from an iPhone. When transferring from an iPhone or an iPad, you only have the option of plugging directly in. And to do that, you could use the Lightning to USB-C cable that likely came with your iPhone. If you don't have a Lightning to USB-C connector, you could use a USB-C to standard USB adapter like this one from Samsung. And you should be able to request one of these for free directly from Samsung. Just tell them that you recently purchased a Galaxy S23 and give them the order number and they should ship this right out. If you don't want to wait that long for an adapter, I'll have a link to a different adapter you can use down in the description below. Since I do have a Lightning to USB-C cable, I'm just going to use that. Once the devices are connected, you're going to get a notification on your iPhone asking you to trust your new phone. Then you'll have to enter in your passcode. Once you've entered your passcode, tap next on your Galaxy S23. Once my S23 Ultra is done scanning through the iPhone, it's gonna give me a list of everything I can transfer. And as you can see, it's not quite as much as I could transfer with another Samsung device, but you still get a lot of options. You can still transfer all of your calls and contacts. And for messages, it defaults to the last 30 days. But if you tap the arrow, you can choose all of your messages. You can transfer all of your applications, but you can't select specific applications. What this is going to do is look for Android equivalent versions of the applications you have installed on your iPhone and install those applications. Then it will give you a list of all the applications that it couldn't transfer. You can also transfer data from iPhone applications, but it's not a lot. You can just transfer from the calendar, the notes application, as well as your internet bookmarks. You do still get the settings option along with your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections, so that's great to see. And you can also transfer your home screen layout as well. And this includes your app and shortcut layout, as well as your lock screen and home screen wallpapers, as long as it's not the default wallpapers that came with your iPhone. And again, that's for copyright reasons. And at the bottom, you get the option to transfer all of your images, videos, audio, and documents. But you don't get the option to selectively choose which ones you want to transfer. So this is an all or nothing option. One more very important thing to point out about this is this is only going to transfer files that are currently saved to your phone. So if you have files from your iPhone that are saved just on the iCloud and aren't downloaded directly to your iPhone, those files won't transfer. So you first want to make sure that all the data you want to transfer is downloaded directly to your iPhone before starting this transfer. Another thing that's missing when transferring data from an iPhone is you don't get a time or data estimate at the top. And you can tap this at the bottom to see what can't be transferred, and that's FaceTime and voice call history, which makes sense because there's no FaceTime on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. You also can't transfer messages with iMessage effects or emergency alert messages, and any locked notes from your iPhone. So if you want to transfer the locked notes, you'll first have to unlock them before starting the transfer. And as I mentioned earlier, you can't transfer the default wallpaper, again, for copyright reasons. Once you've selected everything you want to transfer from your iPhone, just tap transfer. But first, let's see what you could transfer from a non-Samsung Android device. When transferring from a non-Samsung Android device, you still get the cable and wireless options for transfer. If you choose the wireless option, you'll first have to download a smart switch to the old phone. So open up the Google Play Store on your old device, find the Samsung smart switch mobile application, and install it. Once it's installed, open the application, then tap allow, 
tap continue, tap let's go, then tap wireless here. I'm gonna tap connect again on my S23 Ultra. I'll then have to accept the invitation to connect on my old device. Then my S23 Ultra is gonna scan the old device to see what it can transfer. Once it's done searching through everything, you get the same three options you did when transferring from a Samsung device. Let's go ahead and take a look at the custom option. And from here, you can see it. you still get a lot of transfer options, but again, not quite as much as you get when transferring directly from a Samsung device. You can still transfer all of your Google accounts, your calls and contacts. You can also transfer your messages. And if you tap this arrow here, you can select which time range you wanna transfer. You can transfer all of your applications or individual applications, just like you could when transferring from a Samsung device. And since I have a Samsung smartwatch connected to my non-Samsung Android device, I also get this Galaxy wearable option where I could transfer all of my Galaxy Watch 5 data directly to my S23 Ultra. You can still transfer all of your settings, but for some reason you can't transfer all of your Wi-Fi network passwords. But there is another way to do that that I'll show you in a minute. Further down, you still get the option to transfer all of your images, videos, music, and documents and files as well. And if you tap these arrows, you could still select which specific folders and files you want to transfer. And if you tap to find out what data can't be transferred, it's any application data that's restricted from transferring due to an application's policies. And just like when transferring from a Samsung device, you do get the estimated amount of data and estimated amount of time it's going to take to transfer all that data at the top. So once you've selected everything you want to transfer, just tap transfer and the transfer will begin. Now that my S23 Ultra is mostly charged, I switched to having both devices plugged into each other because there's something important that I wanna show you that only applies when you have the devices connected to each other with a cable. So I've selected everything I wanna transfer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tap transfer. And if you had WhatsApp on your old device, it's gonna tell you that it can transfer the application, but if you wanna transfer all the messages from the WhatsApp application, you'll have to first back up your messages from within the WhatsApp application on your old device, then restore them from within the WhatsApp application on the new device. So I'm gonna tap next again and it's gonna begin transferring all the data from the old device to the new device. And right here, you'll see that it says, don't disconnect the cable. Because if you do, the data transfer is gonna stop. After a few moments, you'll be able to continue the setup process on your new device while all the data transfers in the background. Once you finish going through the setup process, you'll get this message that says, you're all set up, tap finish, and you'll be able to start using your new device while the data finishes transferring in the background. Just remember not to disconnect the cable until it says you can. If you wanna check on the progress, you can pull down your notification shade, and pull down this little transferring notification here. And you can see that there's four minutes left. And if you tap this, it'll show you exactly what's transferring. So right now it tells me it's transferring Samsung Notes. Once the transfer finishes, you get a notification on both devices telling you that the transfer is completed. Now you can go ahead and tap done on the old device. And on the new device, it'll tell you that you can now disconnect the USB cable. So I'm gonna do that now and set the old device aside. Now when I go to my home screen, you'll see that some of the applications still haven't finished installing yet. And that's because the way the transfer works is it takes all the data on the old device and it compresses it into a smaller package, kind of like a zip file. Then it transfers that smaller package over in one shot, then unpacks it on the new device. This makes it so that the two devices have to spend less time connected to each other. And if I swipe up to look at my applications, you'll see that as they're installed, they're going from gray to colored. And if I pull down my notification shade again, you'll see that it's still organizing all of my data and it takes about eight minutes to finish that. And this also includes the time it's gonna to take to finish installing all the applications. And if I tap this again, it'll show me exactly what it's working on. So right now, it's updating all of my Samsung Notes data. Once the transfer finishes, you get a notification telling you that the data transfer is complete. And if you tap this, you'll be able to see the results of the transfer. And down here, you can see that one application was not transferred. If I tap this, it'll tell me that the Samsung Health application wasn't transferred. But that makes sense because Samsung Health comes pre-installed on my S23 Ultra. Once you're done looking through the results, you can tap next. And it tells me that I still need to reset my Galaxy Watch to connect it to the new device. However, since I already selected what I want to transfer during the setup process, setting up the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro on the new device is going to be much faster. So now I'll just tap next again, and it'll remind me to make sure I'm signed into my calendar and Samsung accounts to make sure all of my data transfers. After that, just tap done, and all your data will be transferred. If you want to transfer data from multiple devices, or you already finished setting up your device and you don't want to factory reset it to transfer data from your old device, all you have to do is open up the Samsung Smart Switch application again. So I'm gonna open this, and I wanna receive data. Now I'll open the Smart Switch application on the old device, and tap Send Data, and choose whether I wanna send it through a cable or wirelessly. And on my new device, I'll select what type of device I'm transferring from, and select the same type of transfer method. Then just follow the same process I showed you earlier. If for some reason, you're not gonna have your old device with you to transfer all the data to the new device, there's still an option for you as long as you have an Android device. So right here, I have a Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, and here I have a Pixel 5. When you open up the Samsung Smart Switch application on either of these devices, you'll see this icon in the upper right corner. And if you tap this, 
You'll be able to back up all of your data either to an internal micro SD card if there's one available on your device or to an external storage device if you don't have a micro SD card. If you're going to be transferring data to a micro SD card, you're going to need a USB-C to micro SD card reader. This one from Ugreen works great and I'll have a link to it down in the description if you're interested. That's not sponsored, this is just the one that I personally use. If you're going to be backing up to an external storage device, you'll need a USB-C to standard USB adapter and a regular USB storage device or a USB-C storage device. If you're backing up to the micro SD card, your option is going to be called SD card. And if you're backing up to an external storage device, your option is going to be called USB storage. From here, you'll get the same transfer options on both devices. And if I tap next, you'll see just about all the same options that you saw before. The only thing you can't transfer are your accounts. You will have to log back into those for security reasons. However, if you're transferring from a Samsung device, you do still get to transfer all of your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. Once you selected everything you want to transfer, just tap back up at the bottom. What happens next is going to depend on what kind of device you're transferring the data on. If you're transferring from a Samsung device, it's going to encrypt the data using your Samsung account. If you're transferring using a non-Samsung device, you're going to have to set up a password. Now, it's incredibly important that you remember this password because if you forget this password, all of your data is lost. There is no one who's going to be able to get that back for you, not even Samsung. So pick a password that's easy for you to remember, then tap this little eye icon to show the password and write it down somewhere so you don't forget it. Once you've written the password down, go ahead and tap OK, and it'll ask you to enter the password a second time. Then tap OK again, and it'll start backing up all your data. On the Samsung side, just tap OK, and the backup will start. Once the backup finishes, you'll get your backup results, then just tap Next, and tap Done. And if you're using an external storage, you're going to want to safely eject that storage, so pull your notification shade down, and tap Eject on the USB drive. Once the notification disappears, it's safe to remove your drive. Once you get your Galaxy S23, you're going to want to set it up without transferring any data. Then once it's set up, you're going to want to open up the Samsung Smart Switch application, tap the SD card option in the top, and plug in your external storage device. Your S23 is going to read through the storage device, find the backup, and it'll even tell you which device the backup is from. And that means you could back up data from multiple devices onto the same micro SD card and restore all of that data from all of the devices to a single device. So from here, just tap the data you want to restore, enter the password, and tap OK. And from here, you might as well just transfer everything because you already went through the selection process when you backed up the data in the first place. But if for some reason you don't want to transfer everything, select Custom, tap Next, and you can select what you do and don't want to transfer. From here, you'll just tap Restore, and all the data will be transferred to your new device. Just remember, once you're done restoring all of your data, be sure to pull your notification shade down, go to the USB storage option, and unmount it. Once you get the unmounted notification, you can take the USB stick out and set it aside. If your old Android device doesn't allow you to automatically transfer all of your Wi-Fi passwords to your new device, just open up the settings on the old Android device, then go to Network and Internet, then Internet, and tap Save to Networks at the bottom, then select one of those networks, and tap this Share icon right here. Your phone may ask you to verify that it's you, so go ahead and do that. Then you'll be given a QR code that you could scan with your new device to transfer the Wi-Fi network to that device. And depending on which Android device you have, you may even see the Wi-Fi password down here so you could enter it manually if you wanted. Since using the camera is a lot faster, I'm just going to go ahead and open up the camera app on my Galaxy S23 Ultra, aim it at the QR code, then tap Connect to Network. And at first, it may look like nothing happened, but if you tap the three dots in the upper right corner, then tap Advanced Settings, then tap Manage Networks, and if I scroll down a bit, I'll see the new network right there. Now just rinse and repeat this process for all the networks you want to transfer. Now that your phone is set up, check out this video over here to see the best accessories for your Galaxy S23. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss my deep dive coverage of the Galaxy S23 Ultra. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.